Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to try to explain to you guys the task manager as best as I can, and as completely as I can, in 10 minutes or less. So, in order to open up the task manager in Windows, you would hit Control alt delete and select task manager from the bottom of the list. Um, that's one way to open it. Another option is to right click on the taskbar, that's the black bar at the bottom of the screen, and go to task manager, which is third from the bottom. Either way you open it, the task manager is generally used for closing out programs that are currently frozen. So if you have a program that is completely frozen or using up too much memory or CPU for some reason, you can select it from the list and you can go ahead and hit end task. So here I'll select task manager and I will choose end task. So now that program has been closed. Basically programs that are completely frozen will generally be able to be closed with task manager. So try that before you just resort to rebooting the computer. Beyond that, you have uh, some statistics about the different parts of your computer that are currently operating. Uh, what I mean is that it shows you out of the total capacity for your system hardware, your CPU, your memory, your read-write for the hard drive, uh, your network usage, and your graphics processor unit or your graphics card. It'll show you based on how much they can handle, how much is currently being used. So right here, if it says 12% CPU, that means that the processor of the computer is being 12% utilized. It's only ever really a problem if it gets close to 100%. You may start to notice things being completely frozen. Um, so obviously, if you open up the task manager, you can get a quick idea of why your computer might be running slow, because the CPU might be maxed out, the memory might be maxed out, or even the disk read-write operations might be maxed out. So uh, the CPU uh, basically is your computer's ability to do mathematical operations. So if you have something that is really heavy, like let's say recording a video, um, you might notice that your CPU is getting a bit high. In this case, not too bad. OBS is actually pretty good. And But if you have something like a video editing program, that might make this go a lot higher. Likewise for memory. So this is the RAM of your computer or random access memory. It's uh, the memory storage, which is temporary. So when your computer turns off, everything in the RAM goes away. And the reason RAM is useful is it's very fast. So your computer will put things in memory so that you can, say, switch to a web browser, go between tabs very quickly, um, kind of lightning fast, right? Uh, as opposed to the hard drive, which would be over here, your read-write usage. Reading and writing from the hard drive is a lot slower. So generally, if it's something that has to be done fast, it'll be on memory, not disk read, right? Uh, but if you're doing something like opening a program or even more so, you're writing to a file, like if you're exporting a video, then your disk read write will go way up. Um, it's not actually the amount of storage on your hard drive, but it's how fast your hard drive can read or write data. So if it says it in megabyte, me, uh, yeah, megabytes per second, uh, don't be confused. It's reading and writing to the hard drive. It's not your capacity of the hard drive. Network over here. Um, once again, almost never is going to be capped out. It's your computer's ability to communicate over the network, and I believe this is based on your network card, not your overall internet bandwidth. So your network card on your computer, uh, basically the port where you're allowed to send data in and out to your router and so forth to the internet, um, might have a vastly faster capacity than your internet bandwidth, the incoming data. Uh, from your ISP, Internet Service Provider. So uh, this is usually not a problem, but you can see which programs are sending a lot of data if you are running into issues. And then GPU is like CPU, except it's for graphics-related stuff, and this would be generally referring to your graphics card. So if this is running really high, then, uh, I mean, your CPU might be running into some issues. Make sure it's not overheating or anything like that. And games or video related tools would be things that would use this a lot. So OBS is using my GPU a lot because it's recording video, which is a very graphics intensive thing, right? Okay, so cool. Um, just if any of these are reaching 100, then you might be running into some issues and it'll give you an idea of where those might be. So let's go move over to the performance tab here. 
So the performance tab, you can see those statistics kind of measured against time. So here we can see the usage of my CPU, where it might have spiked up a bit, if there was any times when it was 100% usage, which would be something to look out for. Um, and we can do the same thing for memory. Memory usually pretty stable here. Unless you open a program, it won't really need to change. But if you have a lot of programs open, then your memory might reach the 8 gigabyte capacity, or however much memory your computer has. Uh, that would be bad. If you have memory way up here at the top, you're going to experience some slowdown. Uh, because your computer will have to use something called a virtual page file on your hard drive, which is basically where your hard drive fakes RAM, but it runs much, much slower than real RAM. So if you're running into issues like that all the time, probably upgrade the RAM on your computer would be a good idea, or at least just close unnecessary programs. Disk read write, same thing here. Uh, if it's capped out at 100%, your computer's probably trying to open a file or write to a file. Um, just something to look out for. Uh, wi Wi-Fi and these other network connections, you can see if a lot of data is coming in or out of your computer. And then your GPU or GPUs, in the case of my computer, I have two cards, not one. Um, you can see their overall usage here. So basically this tab will just give you an idea of where you might have some freeze-ups if uh, there was a time in recent history where something was hitting 100% when it really shouldn't. So moving on to app history, uh, here you'll be able to see the programs which you've had opened on your computer since logging in. And um, basically, this would only be relevant to see which programs you might have open or might have not, uh, or uh, might have had open or might have open that you might not actually want. So uh, for instance, Wonderlist here has been open for me for I guess an hour or more, and that's not really a program that would run you into any issues, but you could check here to see what's been running on your computer, like, uh, oh, Cortana, the search engine thing. This is always enabled in Windows 10, by the way, um, but maybe something else you wanted to close out, like mail and calendar. I, I don't know. Uh, you can just check here to see which programs have been open on your computer since logging in. Uh, might give you some useful information. Startup. So this is a tab if you want to reduce your startup time or generally improve your system performance by a little bit. Um, the more programs you disable, the better performance you're going to get because your computer isn't going to have 50 programs running when it opens. Uh, though, that said, uh, there are certain things you do not want to disable. Like for me, that would be my audio drivers here. So Realtek HD Audio Manager. You don't want to close things like that um, because that might be needed for your computer to actually operate 100% correctly. But if any programs that you know you don't need, you can just right click and do disable or you can left click it and hit disable on the bottom right. But just be kind of careful and you can always come back in here and re-enable it if you find out, oh, I actually did need that program. So users, if you have any other people logged into your computer, you can see that right here. Um, Having a second user logged in on a computer and then having apps open is definitely going to slow down your computer. So generally, on the users tab, you only want to see one person logged in at once. So if you see anyone else, uh, go ahead and ask them to log out of their user account properly. Um, I would probably say don't be a dick and just click on their username and tell them to disconnect or something like that. Uh, you know, especially if it's family or whatever. Uh, but yeah, you can see the usage. Uh, of your computer by the user. So here you can see the user Chris is using 1.5 gigabytes of memory. But I'm not sure how that adds up to 46% here because there's supposed to be 8 gigs of memory, but uh, you get the idea. It's showing the usage for each user on this tab. So details will give you extra information about the currently running processes. So it's like the same apps that are over here in processes. But it'll give you more details, and it'll also show you services that are running in the background. So more than just apps, you also have services, which are kind of like background tools that are usually just running uh, without interfering with you at all. They don't ask you for anything. They just kind of do their thing. Um, so you can see the data on uh, basically those 
apps and services that are on your computer. If you want to sort a column, you just click uh, the column you want to sort by, so you can see, oh, Brave Browser and OBS are the ones taking up a lot of memory. Maybe I want to close those. Uh, also, if you right-click on the header columns, you can do select columns, which will allow you to basically choose other attributes which you can sort by, and it probably is too advanced for most people to mess around in here. Um, a lot of stuff I don't even know what they are talking about. But if you ever want to add extra things to sort by, you can do that there. Generally, this tab is unnecessary. It's only if you need very specific or technical information about what's running on your computer. So let's move on to services. So as I mentioned, services are kind of just these background tools that run on your computer without bothering you with anything. So that might be something like uh, an antivirus automatic scanning service. So it will know when to scan your computer and it'll just go ahead and do it without asking you. Stuff related to Windows, like the ability to log in and log out, that would be a service. I, I don't actually know if this is the one for that, but yeah, just a lot of these little background things that you don't really generally have to worry about. But there might be a service where you don't really want it to boot up when Windows starts because you think it's unnecessary. So you could find a service which is currently running here. And if you wanted to stop it from uh, opening when Windows starts, you could hit the Open Services button here. And uh, from there, you would just need to, when it loads, you would just need to find the services in the services list and change its startup from automatic to manual. Uh, but you should be really careful about doing this. You don't want to close stuff which is actually important for your computer. So something like Windows Power, you probably don't want to change this from automatic to manual because that might cause major issues because those services might actually be important for Windows to run. So I would just recommend you don't actually screw around in here unless you know kind of what you're doing. But if you ever need to turn off a service, that's where you can do it from the task manager. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about task manager from a basic user standpoint. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.